Election cycles always affect the healthcare industry if for no other reason than the government is an increasingly large presence in the financing of healthcare in America. This particular cycle, though, is going to have an even more profound effect on healthcare given the pledge of the uh, Republicans in the Senate, still holding a majority, uh, and now the president elect uh, to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Exactly how that's going to go is uncertain at this time. I expect to see a dramatic reduction in funding for the exchanges, and which means more people will probably lose coverage, and that will impact hospital funding and in many other sectors of health care. Um, I don't expect to see a total repeal uh, soon of, of the exchanges because that would require 60 votes in the Senate that the Republicans don't have. But they can uh, pass uh, measures to defund certain critical aspects of these exchanges with only 51 votes through the process of reconciliation. They will also repeal the taxes, the Cadillac tax, the health insurance provider tax, the medical device tax, all of which fund the exchanges and the health care subsidies. But beyond that, what other parts of the ACA might they repeal? It is not entirely clear. The ACA also established the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, which has been funding demonstrations on value-based care. The Affordable Care Act established ACOs, which have been widely adopted throughout the country. The Affordable Care Act uh, revised Medicare Advantage payment rates. It revised uh, quality measures, or set up a process to develop new quality measures in the Medicare program. It even altered the Indian Health Service Act. How many of those changes actually do the Republicans believe they have a mandate to repeal? Or do they even want to repeal those things? Recently, there's been a couple of programs that were mandated that we might expect to see undone uh, as a result of the change in administration. Two programs in particular. One is called the, uh, is known as the Joint Replacement Bundled Payment Program for knee and hip replacements where hospitals and their associated providers get paid a fixed payment uh, to deliver a complete package around that. And the other is known as the Part B drug demonstration, which is um, a, a manner, a, a mechanism for uh, essentially lowering spending for drugs that are delivered in mostly in doctor's offices like oncology and fusion medications. And um, that one in particular has a lot of opposition from the pharmaceutical industry, which we knew, assuming a Clinton victory, was lining up to oppose it, um, now they might simply uh, be able to get uh, Congress and the administration to make it go away. Something else that uh, I think it's fair to expect uh, is that President Trump will use the highly criticized uh, executive order tool employed by President Obama to control some of the discretionary aspects of the overall health care program and that there will be cutbacks in that area, there will be cutbacks in, in uh, labor rules that affect health care companies, like who's an employee, who's an independent contractor. A second challenge, of course, is what will be passed in its place. Um, Republicans in Congress and the Trump administration have always campaigned on repeal and replace of the ACA, implying that something will be enacted to provide some level of health care coverage in its place. But there is, there has never been agreement among Republicans over what such a proposal would look like. There is widespread disagreement amongst Republicans over how coverage should be expanded, whether it be through financial incentives for individual purchase of health insurance or more extensive uh, incentives to broaden employer-provided insurance. Healthcare being such a big industry in this country and a lot of it dependent on government uh, spending, uh, you know, there are jobs dependent on, on the continued flow of these funds. And uh, you look at many economies in states that uh, were Key swing states, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania. If you look closely at the economies of some of those former Rust Belt cities, they're heavily propped up by healthcare. And um, 
Uh, if you deflate healthcare spending uh, massively, you could see harm to those very same economies that are dependent now dependent on health spending. There are a number of important healthcare policies and trends that I think will continue despite the recent election. The first one is the expansion of Medicare Advantage as opposed to the traditional Medicare fee-for-service. The second is um, the widespread use of alternative payment models, such as paying for performance, bundled payments, um, value-based purchasing, whatever you call it, the concept is paying for value as opposed for paying for volume. And this is a concept that's being supported by both Democrats and Republicans. The only thing that we really know that's been put in writing is things like um, giving tax credits to people to buy insurance on the individual market, um, increasing the availability of health savings accounts, not only in a, in increasing limits perhaps, but making them, um, making it possible for people to pass them to their heirs so that they increase their um, uh, desire to uh, see it as a tax-favored savings plan. Um, and uh, there's this proposal to uh, allow insurers to sell policies across state lines, given that insurance traditionally has been regulated by states. And so insurance um, theoretically is less competitive when it's state by state. Um, don't know if that's really if that kind of change will really open up the marketplace since we have plenty of national insurers that effectively span state lines. Um, but we can cer certainly see impact on the health insurance industry no matter what. <music>